Hello to all students. In this video lecture, we are going to discuss crossing over. As you know that there are two types of reproduction, asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction. During the process of cell sexual reproduction, a process is known as meiosis, which takes place during gametes formation, I mean sperm formation and egg formation in male and female respectively. During the process of meiosis, there are different stages and in the stage of prophase 1, this process takes place. And uh, as you know that in human body, there are 46 chromosomes present in each cell. And these 46 chromosomes are in the form of 23 pairs, which are known as homologous pairs of chromosomes. In these pairs of chromosomes, in these 46 chromosomes, 23, 23 chromosomes uh, are coming from your mother and 23, 23 chromosomes are coming from your father into your body cells. So all these 23 plus 23 chromosome make up your genetic makeup in the form of 46 chromosome. During gamete formation in an adult body, these homologous pair of pairs of chromosome in the process of meiosis in the prophase 1 stage come close to each other. So I have taken a diagram of a homologous pair of chromosome. If you look at this diagram, this chromosome is coming from your male parent and this chromosome is coming from your female parent. Each chromosome has been duplicated. So this is a duplicated chromosome. It consists of two chromatids which are joined with each other with the help of centromere. These two chromatids are known as sister chromatids. At the same time, this is also a chromosome which consists of two chromatids which are sister chromatids because they, they are made up of, they are attached with the same centromere. So these sister chromatids are attached with centromere. These chromosomes, homologous pair of chromosome, during the process of meiosis come close to each other and form a connection known as synapsis, which is parallel uh, fusion of these two chromosomes with each other. After synapsis, there a structure is formed which is known as bivalent or tetrod. In this structure, non-sister chromatids, it means that one chromatid from this chromosome and the other chromatid from this chromosome overlap with each other. One at one point or more than one point, forming a connection known as chiasma, where a structure is formed which is known as synaptonemal complex. And during synaptonemal complex formation, there is exchange of DNA between these two non-sister chromatids, which is known as crossing over. After crossing over, these two chromosomes get separated from each other and become recombinant chromosomes or recombinant chromatids. If you look at this diagram, after crossing over, this blue chromosome contains the part of red chromosome, red chromatid, and the red chromosome contains the part of blue chromosome or chromatid. Now these two chromatids or chromosome are, they contain genetic material from two different chromosomes. So these are now known as recombinant chromatids. How this process usually takes place? So let's take a look at next diagram. So I have taken a small section from chiasma right over here. During meiosis, there is a stage known as prophase 1, which also divided into five different stages, including leptotein, zygotein, pachytene, diplotene, and diakinesis. So during the phase of leptotene, chromatin material, chromosome starts to uncoil in the form of chromatin material and they are get separated from each other in the form of four 
strands four chromatids so this is first chromatid second chromatid third chromatid fourth chromatid they comes in the form of an open configuration their chromatin material appears and their genetic materials opens up and a structure is now going to form which is known as synaptonemal complex is going to be assembled in this stage which is known as leptotene after leptotene during the process of zygotene and pachytene crossing over takes place during the process of cro crossing over if you look at this diagram the genetic material of one chromosome exchange with genetic material of another chromosome and a configuration is formed which is known as holiday junction which contain four strands of dna one is right over here this is second stage this is third stage and this is fourth stage and these are the base pair between these strands of dna molecules which are exchanged and newly strand newly strands newly genes are formed and assembled right over here to understand it more uh, conveniently i have taken a piece of dna right over here so this is a double stranded dna molecule of one chromosome and this is the double stranded dna molecule of second strand all these process of crossing over are controlled by certain enzymes like exonucleases ligases etc during the process of crossing over the dna molecule of one chromosome breaks up and uh, their flanking ends get separated from each other 3 prime to 5 prime direction 5 prime to 3 prime direction has been separated now in the next step the both strands of both chromosomes dna they form a structure known as d loop formation during d loop formation dna strands intermix with each other their gn and dna bases exchange with each other and new strands are formed now i have taken this diagram right over here after the exchange of pieces of dna pieces of nucleotides ligation process starts with help of ligase enzyme and two new types of dna molecules are formed the red color dna contain fragments of blue color dna and blue color dna contain fragments of red color dna so the crossing over takes place which can be seen right over here so in this way during the process of crossing over two chromosomes come across each other form a synapsis chiasmata synaptonemal complex exchange of genetic material repair of the repair of dna and the formation of two wholly new strand which are known as recombinant dna or recombinant chromatids or recombinant chromosomes after this all the process of meiosis has completed and these recombinant Uh, gametes recombinant dna recombinant chromosomes uh, are distributed among the gametes which can be used to produce new generation so this crossing over produces genetic variability and variation among upcoming offspring so as you know that there are millions and billions of people living on earth and all the human beings have different genetic makeup even their fingerprints do not match with each other that is all because of crossing over every human being is different from other human being except for twins and that is all because of crossing over if you look at the animal kingdom all the animals in the animal kingdom apparently they look same but they are different from each other with respect to their color with trait with their genetic makeup and this is all because of crossing over so crossing over helps in the process of natural selection which leads into evolution which make the animals and human beings to survive in successfully in the changing environment that's all for today and uh, i hope uh, i will see you in the next lecture until then bye